My first question is, um, you said uh, we sh this should represent not just Tories, not just Leave voters. Those aren't the same. Uh, I, you know, I, as I, I just said, um, you know, it was a lot of labor voting people. It was a lot of people who haven't voted in years and who used to vote labor who came out and voted Leave. Now, given their attitude towards the free movement of people and given how crucial right now free movement of people is to single market membership, um, you know, how, how do you square that circle? It's not as simple as people who voted leave don't want immigration, don't want free nope. movement, people who voted remain do. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's a significant minority of leave voters who voted leave because they wanted us to be the most free trading country in the world. Mm -hmm. They wanted us to keep having as free trade as possible with Europe. We, we, and you know, free movement's a kind of free trade. Uh, and they also wanted us to negotiate our own trade deals and be, you know, and be closer to the Commonwealth as well. So I'm, I'm reaching common cause with those people personally. But as for who represents us, that, that's, you're, you're right that Tories and Leave voters are not the same. All, all I was saying was just, Theresa May represents conservatives who voted Brexit. She doesn't represent the whole country. Well, all right. Broadly speaking, then, does any elected government in a parliamentary system ever represent the whole country? Well, that's a good question. But maybe for something like this, I think where it's going to affect, it's not just four years of our lives, but it's our whole lives and future generations, I think in the spirit of democracy, we should have as many different people involved as possible. Mm -hmm. Now, given that uh, membership in the single market um, is, doesn't help with the growing markets in the East, um, and that, uh, former, uh, that Commonwealth countries like Australia are already interested in, in trade deals, and, and given that uh, President-elect Trump has uh, overridden President Obama and, and taken Britain from the back of the queue to the front of the queue, uh, and given that, given that the exports to the, to the single market are shrinking constantly, why should it be the priority when it binds Britain's negotiating hand? I think it, to make it the priority, sorry. I think it's great that we're at the front of the queue with the US. I think we should be speaking to Australia as well, and New Zealand, and, and lots of other places, Canada. I think that would be fantastic. All we need to do to do that, we, we don't need anything from the EU to do that. All we have to do is leave the customs union, which I believe we should do as, as, you know, as soon as possible. But that doesn't need to be a priority in our negotiations. We can just do that. As the question, what should our priority, what do we want from them? What do we want the Europeans to give us? We want them to let us stay in the single market, I say. Well, they, they will probably let Britain stay in the single market, but they will exact the price that, that um, British people, not the multinationals, not the high-tech people, not the finance people, not people like us, basically, um, uh, want. Um, so I, I would then, I think, is this my last question? Uh, you've got about a minute left. Oh, okay. Well, I would just like to, to clarify a point, uh, because uh, I didn't say, and I don't think people believe that they, they want to stop immigration from Europe. It's, it's a big difference to say stop and, and regulate. R immigration is regulated somewhere. I mean, there's always, there's in, in the United States, it's in Washington. In the European Union, it's in Brussels. Some authority is going to have the final word on what immigration policy is going to be. Now, if, if it's going to be in Westminster rather than in Brussels for the United Kingdom only, um, right now, that is incompatible with single market membership. And, uh, and if people, if the United Kingdom is going to have that control on the policy, uh, the United Kingdom has to leave the single market or give up something else. So, again, 
with, with the market shrinking, this, with the single market getting relatively smaller, why should it be the priority as opposed to just something that'll be good if we can get it? Brussels doesn't regulate immigration. It, it says that people can move it makes around the freely. Well, but I agree with the policy. I think it's great. Just like it's so good in the US. It, it is fantastic. It, people can move from Boston to San Francisco. It's just like that. It's a, to have an internal market where people can freely move from place to place is really excellent for the economy. And it's especially good for small businesses because they don't have the time um, and, they, and they can't take the risk of being prosecuted for getting it wrong. Okay. Thank you very much to both our speakers. Two great speeches and a great cross-examination.